Hi, uh, my name is Simon Bennett. I'm the OSAP founder and project lead. And this is a series of training sessions I'm giving uh, folks here at Stack Org, uh, just about Zap. And uh, in the previous session, I started going through how you can explore your web applications. And in the last session, I went through the standard or traditional spider. And the spider is very effective at exploring your applications um, as long as they are the more traditional ones with lots of um, links that it can follow when it crawls the application. It is not so good with modern web applications. So if your application uses JavaScript to create the links, then the traditional spider may not be so effective. And that's why we have the Ajax spider. And that's what I'm going to talk about this time. So I'm going to share my screen and Hopefully you can now all see Zap. So I'm um, still using Zap 2.9.0. Um, Zap 2.10 should be out fairly soon. Um, but what I'm going to do, so I've got a different application to demo this time uh, or to play around with, and that is OWASP Juice Shop, which is a much more modern web application than Bodget, which I often use. So I'm going to actually start by um, just using the standard spider, just to show, so you can see the difference. And I've got um, Juice Shop running on port 3000. So I'm just using the standard options and kick that off. And you'll see that um, Spider works quite quickly. I think about 15 seconds last time I checked. Um, it's kind of pausing here because it'll probably find a bit more content. But if we just have a look at the tree, we will see that we found some assets, um, an FTP site and yeah, a few things on the FTP site, but that's it. So it's worth just kind of having a look at that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kick off the Ajax spider. And the, as before, there's various ways of doing this. Um, we can right click and attack and click on the Ajax spider here. We've also got a, an Ajax spider tab down here, which will appear when required. And we've also got uh, the tools. There will probably be the Ajax Spider option there as well. So I'm going to, um, I mean, it's picked up the fact that I was on localhost and just double check. Yep. So I'll talk about the advanced options in a bit, but I'm going to kick that off. And we've got various options for the browser. So you can choose which browser you're going to use. But I'm going to stick with Firefox Headless. So we'll kick that off and we will now see, first of all, you see that the Ajax spider, we start getting all these URLs here. You also see that we start getting WebSocket messages as well. And that's because we are actually launching real browsers and they use things like WebSockets. One thing you'll notice here is with the Ajax spider, we don't get a progress bar. Uh, we, you know, it's kind of difficult to tell how far the Ajax spider is through. It's kind of true for the spider as well. We could probably add, add something um, but right now we haven't. Uh, but you'll see the Ajax Spider has actually finished. So for budget, it didn't take too long. Uh, found 951 URLs. It doesn't say how many added to the site tree, which would have been useful. Uh, but if you have a look at the site tree now, uh, you'll see things like the assets have this kind of little um, gray or black blob, which if you can see, if you look closely on the screen, it's actually kind of looking like a spider. The Ajax spider has red blobs, so it has red spiders. And this means you can see that the Ajax spider found some of the assets, but not all of them. So the traditional spider found more assets, um, whereas it hold, found a whole load of other things, uh, including web sockets. And we'll go up here and we'll see that it found the API. So the Ajax spider is actually, because it is launching browsers, these browsers then making the API requests. So um, Juice Shop it being a modern application, you kind of need a, a browser to actually do these things. So what I'm going to do is just to show you a little bit more what's going on. I'm going to kick off the Ajax Spider again. And this time I'm only going to use one window and um, which will take quite a bit longer. And I'm going to use Firefox rather than Firefox Headless. Uh, because what Zap actually does is Zap launches these browsers. 
and then controls them using selenium. And so we can actually see it going on here. And you can see if you had lots of browsers popping up, it would be a complete and utter pain. And there's interesting, you can see a capture. And because the Ajax Spider in Selenium doesn't understand captures, obviously it's not putting the right values in. But you can see the way that the, the Ajax Spider is working. And I will just kill that now because I think we've kind of seen enough. But that is essentially how the Ajax Spider works. It launches browsers. As I said, you've got a whole range of different browsers you can choose from, and then it clicks on things. So we just have a, another look at the options we've got. On the main screen, context and users. So this is the same as the traditional spider. Uh, and because we haven't set up authentication, we haven't, all, haven't added in the context either. We don't have those options available. Um, just in scope, again, we haven't defined a context or scope. And I didn't want, to, didn't want to spider the subtree. The Ajax spider will actually not go out of the domain. Um, so if we have a look along here, we'll probably see a whole load of things out of scope. So you can see we actually found a link to OWASP. And so the Ajax spider didn't follow that. Uh, well, it tried to. Um, Selenium clicked on things, uh, but Zap kind of intercepted that, realized it was out of scope, and prevented that from happening. So. Zap will prevent uh, the Ajax Spider from going out of scope, uh, but in some cases you might find that you want to actually in include certain sites in scope so that the browsers pull those in, those assets in. Um, so I said, and, and then we've got a whole range of browsers. So we've got Chrome, Firefox, HTML Unit, Phantom JS, and Safari. Uh, that's because I'm on a Mac. If you're not on a Mac, you probably won't see for Safari. Phantom JS, that would only work if you've got it installed. I think HTML unit might come with Zap, I can't remember. I tend to use Firefox all the time, uh, or Chrome sometimes, just to try these things out. And it's only Chrome and Firefox that have the headless options. If you go to the um, advanced options here, you'll see we've got um, an option for the number of browser windows to open. Uh, I've been finding on my system it's actually much more effective to have four or five browsers open. Um, it seems to take a lot longer with only one browser. We've got this option for crawl depth, which is the same as the standard spider. Um, looks like we've got quite a bit, we go a bit, quite a bit deeper on the Ajax spider. Can't quite remember why that is. Um, but this is very, this is the depth in the sites tree. But then we've got this maximum crawl states. Um, this is different from the spider, uh, the traditional spider because what the Ajax Spider does is it maintains the state of what the application looks like in the browser. So if the DOM changes when uh, we have uh, browser client-side events, then the, the Ajax Spider detects that and treats that as a different state. So what you can do is you can limit the Spider based on the number of crawl states that it finds. And you can also limit it based on the maximum duration, which is the same as the spider. Now, in the experiences I've had with the Ajax spider is it can sometimes get into loops and can take a long time. So I think it is very worth actually setting either the crawl states or the maximum duration. But I think the key thing is you should play around with it and with your application because you probably will find you need to tune the Ajax Spider to be as effective as possible with your particular application. Two other things we've got here are the event wait time. So this is the length of time that the browser will wait after um, there's been a client side event. So say you click on a button and that you get an event rather than going to a new URL, then the browser will wait up to, in this case, one second before trying something different. And again, we've got this reload time. So when we have a new URL is opened in the browser, this is the length of time that the browsers or Selenium will wait until it starts clicking on things. So if your application actually takes longer, if it's, you know, it's a particularly slow application and the, you know, it can take several seconds to load the page, you may well need to increase these timeouts or the spider will not uh, be able to explore it very effectively. So like a lot of tools, we have a whole load of extra options in the options panel and dialogue. And we can see we've got some similar ones here. 
So we've got the same choice of browsers, number of browsers of window open, and the crawl states and depth and duration and the wait times. Now we've also got options for clicking elements once. So by default, um, Selenium will only click on elements once. Um, if your application actually some things happen differently if you click an element more than once then you want to turn that off. We also um, put random values in the form fields uh, which you, as you saw with the um, some of the fields it was filling in so you can turn that off and by default we only click on um, the A button and input so the, the anchor the button and the input uh, HTML elements. If your application actually works differently you know if you have events that are tied to other um, elements such as divs or anything else then you may well want to disable that and then we've actually got all of the different elements here so you can choose which of these so you can table rows underlined video text areas anything you like so again you may well want to tune this for your application you can just um, turn this off and click on every element but that will take typically take a long time. So as always with these things, it's this trade-off between how effective um, Zap is, in this case in crawling modern web applications using the browser, and how long it takes. So what I do recommend is you actually try out with your applications and you play around with the settings and you have a look at the sites tree uh, and you see what the Ajax Spider finds. And if the Ajax Spider isn't finding things effectively, then play around with those settings, have a look at your application and try and work, work out why the Edge Spider isn't finding things. And if you have a lot of problems and you can't work that out, then obviously get in touch with us, um, the LSAP team that is. And you can go to the zaproxy.org site and there's loads of um, links there which will help you. That is the, um, so I've shown you the advanced options and some recommendations. So what it's gonna do now, actually I will show you, so this is zaproxy.org. And I was mentioning, if you do want support, then we've got getting started guide, if we can ask questions, we've got user group and IRC as well. But what I did in, when I showed um, the spider before, I showed where the source code was. Um, so I want to do that here again. And so I'm going to go to the um, ZA proxy org on GitHub. And last time I showed you the spider and that was under ZA proxy. So ZA proxy is kind of the, what we call the core. And the Ajax Spider is different in it's part of the Zap extensions. So what we've been trying to do is to move more functionality into Zap extensions and to actually create new functionality in Zap extensions as well. Actually, if I go back here and we have a look at the add-ons, you will see that the Ajax Spider, so it's got its own add-on and you can see which repo it's in. Um, and we've got help there as well. If I go into Zap Extensions, then we have, uh, there's the add-ons folder. This is where all of the, a lot of the add-ons, all of the ones in Zap Extensions are in here. We have quite a few extensions in Core, um, ZA Proxy, and we do have some other add-ons in different places like the HUD, which I will come to in another session. So if you scroll down here, surprisingly, it's not Ajax Spider, it's actually Spider Ajax for historical reasons. And there it is it is under here where you will find a whole load of source code. And as before, anything which starts with extension, in this case, extension Ajax, that's kind of the entry point for the add-on. So if you want to get started, this is one place to look. This is you know, a good place to start looking for the source code. However, as I mentioned, um, we use Selenium, but we don't use it directly. We actually use a, another product. And this is called Crawljax. And the thing is, so Crawljax was, um, so it is a separate project and it was maintained by another team. However, unfortunately, over time, it became less maintained and we tried to contribute fixes back to Crawljax, um, but they weren't um, merged. So we actually have our own fork now. So if we scroll, scroll down here, you'll see Crawljax. So Crawljax is, Said it was a third party product. We've got a, um, our own fork of it. And this is the product that controls Selenium. So the Zap add on kind of wraps this and makes it, you know, put, adds the UI and then kind of um, puts Crawljax into Zap. 
And I've just remembered that one of the things I should have done beforehand is shown you the API. So I will go back and I'll go to go back to Zap and go to the local API. And here we see Ajax Spider. So as before with the spider, we've got views where you can see things and actions where you can do things. Let's just go back to Zap and I will clear the session and then we can go to the actions and we've got a scan action just the same as with the spider particularly big so we'll make that bigger so it's 3000 uh in scope false subtree only false and hopefully that's it and we get an okay result and we will see now one thing's worth noting is we don't actually this the ajax spider tab isn't being updated um, that's one of the few things which we don't have good integration with the API, but you can see it is actually progressing. And if I, if I go back to the Ajax Spider, we've got a status again, and submit that, and you'll see it's running. So we don't get any progress here. Now, the one thing you, you'll notice is we've got an OK back rather than ID, and that is because at the moment you can only run one Ajax Spider scan at a time. With the traditional spider, you could kick off as many as you like. But with the Ajax spider, for um, historical reasons, we can't do that. You can only have one. Um, so click on the status again and stopped. So we now know that the Ajax spider has finished. And as you'll see, we can see right number of results. So we can, there were 803 results. And we can actually go and see the full results. There we have them. So we see both in scope and out of scope. So if I just expand all, it might take a while, but there anyway, we So we can now see, um, so we can see status reason, we can see the, the method, message ID, URL, status code. So that's all of the ones for the results that are in scope. And we have a separate section for out of scope. We can see here all of these things which are uh, not in the, uh, under the local host domain. And as before with the spider, um, and all of the API, if you see anything which starts with option or set option, then those are related to the options and are almost certainly automatically generated. Um, so we can see um, the reload wait time, which is 1000, which is as per the um, UI, which is good. And we can, so we can see all of the option information and we can set it as well. And we've got options for stopping. We don't have an option for pausing with the traditional spider and some of the other what we call scanners you can pause and resume with the ajax spider again for historical reasons we can't actually stop the uh, so we can't pause and restart the ajax spider but we can stop it that is the api and the api for the ajax spider is it's quite simple um it's more simple you know than the traditional spider but it's very much of the same ilk so that was the introduction to the desktop, um, the Ajax Spider, the desktop, uh, the API, and I showed you some of the source code as well, including Crawljax. So for those of you who are here, how was that? Was there anything else you'd like to know about the Ajax Spider? That so, was uh, that was great, Simon. Thank you for sharing some of that knowledge. I guess uh, what what about the Selenium? Why, why is this Crawljax piece needed in order to operate the Selenium? Okay, good question. So what Selenium does is Selenium allows us to control browsers. And we use Selenium in quite a few places within Zap. Um, so we use it directly um, for various things, including Zest and just launching browsers. So where you see, go to Manual uh, Explore and we just want to launch a browser from there or from here, we are using Selenium to do that. However, um, when we actually, so if I just go to Juice Shop, what we would now would need to do is we would actually need to understand all of these links and what happens when we click on them. With a modern web application, there are an awful lot of things and it's understanding this state. And that's something which is actually very complex and that's something so there's a whole load of functionality about understanding the state of the application in the browser and working out what you need to click on and whether you click on something we've clicked on something before and that's what we're using crawljax for so this was actually implemented as a google summer of code project 
And if you look at the Crawl Jax code, there's actually a lot there. Um, so it was implemented, I think it was a university project somewhere else, um, but it's quite sophisticated. And it'd be a lot of work to replicate that. Uh, we certainly could do, but we haven't. And so far we've found Crawl Jax is quite effective at what it does, but we have had to update it to handle certain things, which is why we maintain our own fork now. We can we can control the, control the browser directly, but actually understanding the state of the application in the browser, that's what we're using Crawljax for. Awesome, thank you for the clarity. Yeah, that was a good question. Great, uh, so thank you very much for that. And what I'll be, um, I will carry on with exploring applications in the next session. I'll hopefully be able to tidy that up, um, finish off the exploring side. Uh, there are various other ways to explore applications, and there are some other features, um, things like the form handler, which tie in with the spidering as well. Uh, but until next time, I'll see you later.